published in 1973, for reasons of state, is one of Noam Chomsky's most critical examinations of American political power and imperialism. The book delves into the ideological underpinnings of U.S. foreign policy, exposing the mechanisms by which the state justifies its actions, particularly in the context of the Vietnam War and other Cold War interventions. Chomsky argues that the rhetoric of democracy and freedom is often a far aid for maintaining state power and pursuing economic and geopolitical interests. His analysis is a scathing critique of U.S. domestic and foreign policies, exploring how intellectuals and the media contribute to the perpetuation of state narratives. Chomsky begins by discussing the role of intellectuals in society, particularly how they have historically aligned with state power. He argues that intellectuals are often complicit in justifying state actions by crafting narratives that serve the interests of the ruling elite. Chomsky challenges the notion that intellectuals are neutral or objective observers, asserting that they frequently play a crucial role in rationalizing imperialism and violence. He critiques the technocratic mindset which emphasizes the management of society through supposedly objective expertise, but often masks the underlying power dynamics and moral considerations. In the first chapter, Chomsky critically examines the U.S. policy of containment, which was designed to limit the spread of communism during the Cold War. He argues that the containment doctrine was less about protecting the world from communism and more about maintaining American hegemony. Vietnam serves as a primary case study for this argument. Chomsky contends that the U.S. intervention in Vietnam was not a defensive action, but an aggressive attempt to impose a particular social order that would be conducive to you. S interests. Chomsky dissects the justifications given for the Vietnam War, such as the need to defend South Vietnam from communist aggression. He demonstrates that these justifications were often misleading or outright false, designed to garner public support for a war that was fundamentally about maintaining control over Southeast Asia. Chomsky also highlights the brutality of the U.S. military strategy in Vietnam, emphasizing the extensive use of bombing, chemical warfare, and other tactics that caused immense suffering among the Vietnamese population. In the second chapter, Chomsky discusses the arguments for and against the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Vietnam. He argues that the debate over withdrawal was often framed in a way that obscured the moral and political realities of the war. For many policymakers and commentators, the primary concern was not the illegitimacy of the U.S. intervention, but how to withdraw without damaging American credibility or interests. Chomsky critiques the notion that a rapid withdrawal would lead to a communist takeover and subsequent bloodbath, pointing out that such arguments were speculative and ignored the fact that the U.S. occupation was itself a source of massive violence and instability. He argues for an immediate and unconditional withdrawal, asserting that continued U.S. presence in Vietnam only perpetuated suffering and conflict. Chomsky also explores the broader implications of the war, particularly how it reflected and reinforced the imperial mindset of U.S. policymakers. Third chapter challenges the conventional understanding of the Cold War 
as a struggle between the forces of democracy, led by the US, and totalitarianism, led by the Soviet Union. He argues that this narrative oversimplifies the complex geopolitical dynamics of the era and serves to justify American interventionism. According to Chomsky, the Cold War was not merely a reaction to Soviet expansionism, but also a means for the US to assert its dominance over the global capitalist order. He analyzes key events of the Cold War such as the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Korean War, and the U.S. involvement in Latin America, demonstrating how the U.S. consistently acted to suppress popular movements that threatened its interests, regardless of whether those movements were aligned with the Soviet Union. Chomsky suggests that the rhetoric of anti-communism was often used as a pretext for maintaining control over strategic regions and resources. In the fourth chapter, Chomsky examines the U.S. government's use of human rights rhetoric to justify its foreign policy actions. He argues that while the U.S. often presents itself as a defender of human rights, its actions frequently betray a different agenda. Chomsky provides examples of how the U.S. has supported repressive regimes and engaged in human rights abuses when it suits its strategic interests. Chomsky critiques the selective application of human rights discourse, noting that the U.S. often condemns human rights violations in enemy states while ignoring or downplaying similar abuses committed by its allies. He argues that this double standard undermines the credibility of U.S. human rights advocacy and reveals the cynical nature of its foreign policy. Chomsky also discusses the role of the media and intellectuals in perpetuating this hypocrisy by selectively reporting on human rights issues in a way that aligns with U.S. government narratives. Fifth chapter delves into the role of the media in shaping public perception of U.S. foreign policy, particularly during the Vietnam War. He argues that the media, far from being a neutral observer, often serves as a tool for the state to disseminate its propaganda, Chomsky critiques the mainstream media for its uncritical acceptance of government narratives and its tendency to marginalize dissenting voices. He explores the concept of manufacturing consent, where the media, through selective reporting and framing, creates a consensus around the state's actions even when those actions are morally questionable or illegal. Chomsky highlights the complicity of journalists and editors, who whether through ideological alignment or fear of losing access to official sources, often fail to challenge the state's justifications for war and intervention. In the final chapter, Chomsky reflects on the broader lessons of the Vietnam War for U.S. foreign policy. He argues that Vietnam was not an anomaly, but a reflection of the broader imperialist tendencies of the U.S. state. Chomsky warns that unless these tendencies are challenged, similar conflicts will continue to arise in the future. Chomsky calls for a revaluation of U.S. foreign policy urging a shift away from imperialism and towards genuine international cooperation and respect for self-determination. He emphasizes the need for a more informed and engaged public, capable of critically assessing the actions of their government and holding it accountable for its policies.